They started. Can the video? Can I hear it? Hey, Emily, I think you have to share your sound. And if you have your headphones in, you have to undo your headphones and just play it out of the speaker of your computer. Hmm, let me see if I can uh, support. Uh, let's see. Because we still can't hear it. These are the moments that make life fun. It's very realistic. We're in this together. <laughs> exactly. Thanks, Rev. Let's see here. Okay. Okay. You try it again. Hi. Very good. Thank you. C'est volonté, Jovenel c'est volonté, c'est volonté, Martin c'est volonté, c'est volonté, tout Joseph c'est volonté, coronavirus pas fait vrai les volonté, mesdames, messieurs, messieurs, dames, c'est volonté. The young people are the path to liberation of Haiti. We will continue fighting until we regain sovereign status because we know it is the Americans, foreign powers, the Organization of American States, and the UN who are supporting President Jovenel Moise. It is they who support these thieves. I send a message to Joe Biden and to them. I know that our resources interest them, but we continue fighting to regain our sovereignty. C'est volonté, ma délice, c'est volonté. C'est volonté, la mode, c'est volonté. C'est volonté, Jovenel, c'est volonté. Coronavirus, ma femme, votez volonté trois fois, messieurs. Mais ça, c'est volonté. Ça, fils, était fait pour coucoute, pour le les enfants, fils, il y a. C'est pas parce que moi n'en m'allais pour moi t'es n'en m'y gale porte Même si mes mois m'ta coûte, pas plié pétro caribé N'est que ça y'a c'est volo Où volait terre, où volait banane C'est volo L'agent a écrit trans l'ambitieux C'est volo Garabane n'en gole C'est volo L'agent Sophie Dye la messieurs, l'agent des malogues la vola, Black Aoul 24 sous 24, 25 stats zombies la moitié, l'agent Corona pas mon lieu, c'est volo, c'est volo, c'est stats zombies la moitié, c'est volo. L'agent Corona pas mon lieu, c'est volé, c'est volé, c'est volé, moi dis, c'est vicié.
Good afternoon, good evening, good night, and good morning to all of our comrades around the world resisting exploitation. My name is Sierra, and I'm a part of the team at Code Pink that supported tonight's incredible event. We have been working very closely with organizations in the Americas, from Canada to Argentina, who joined in solidarity tonight to make tonight's event possible. I would like to especially thank our team at Code Pink, including Michelle, who made this incredible video, uh, Leonardo from our Latin America team, Emily and Farida from our communications team, Lizzie and Reverend Erica, I love y'all are my comrades. Thank you so much for joining in this incredible, incredible uh, solidarity event uh, in solidarity with the Haitians uh, rising up uh, in the struggle for democracy and self-determination. Like many of you uh, today, was a very heavy day just toggling between the live streams of the actions and solidarity with the resistance in Haiti and also with the opening statements of the trial of Officer Siobhan versus George Floyd, who was killed last summer, last May. Um, as a Black woman who was raised in the South, and politically activated around you know, this call, this illegal, immoral call for the war on Iraq, as well as uh, issues of police brutality um, and uh, 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 the prison industrial complex, who was really activated around the killing of 17-year-old uh, Trayvon Martin in Sanford, Florida, I feel as though I have an incredible indebtedness to the revolution that has happened and is continuing to happen in Haiti. This revolution against the state, against the, the illustration of the contradictions that the working class, the most of us with the least of these uh, have in contradiction with the most greedy awful, exploitive, uh, ugly people. <laughs> um, the Haitian Revolution did not just create a new society grounded in the experiences of new human, of the new human, uh, and thinking about one is who has liberated themselves from enslavement and offered a new meaning to uh, human dignity. Uh, life that was born from the radical elimination of private property, both in land and resources and with people uh, who were enslaved, uh, a people who faced the contradictions to a world that placed people, uh, who placed property over people and who were able to eradicate them. Um, Code Pink, we are so honored to present Viva la Liberté, a exhibit and concert organized with the Black Alliance for Peace, community movement builders, Fem Power Miami, and Family Action Network movement in Miami, the Simone Bolivar Institute in Venezuela, uh, all of us and many more. We are presenting this with love, respect, and solidarity for the Haitian people in struggle. The artwork and messages of support included in this series is very representative of the radical departure from mainstream ruling class ideology that tells us that the struggles of people in Haiti are different from the struggles that are oppressed, uh, that are that people are, who are oppressed are faced with in every corner of the world, uh, marred by the exploitation that a capitalist system uh, brings. This series is, is not just to be enjoyed as art for art's sake, but to be used to inspire revolutionary collectivity, uh, solidarity with than the international working class. We want you to take this artwork. We want you to listen to it. We want you to vibe with it. We want you to share it. We want you to post it 
to print it and put it up on your walls. We want to keep these messages going because as we all know, today is not going to be the end of US imperialism on Haiti. We have so, so, so much more to do. Um, Viva Le Libertad. I'm sorry, my Creole is terrible. Um, it holds the contradictions of the past, present and future with mediums as diverse as the artists and cultural workers and organizers are who submitted them. Whether through bold strokes, digital illustrations, snapshots and sound, the artwork that we are going to experience tonight explores Haiti as a political historical project understanding the world not as it is but a vision of the world outside of exploitation and colonialism as it has has been presented within the revolutionary process of of haiti clr james uh said that it is that in revolutionary periods that culmination of previous trends and the beginning of new ones appear for over a century haiti's sovereignty has been obstructed u.s occupation military dictatorship backed by external factors coup d'etats and international guardianship of the u.n all of this imposes a political and economic direction that is fundamentally against the interest of the Haitian people and favors external interests over national sovereignty. For those at Code Pink, again, we view Haiti as a political project, a vision of a world beyond exploitation and condemnation of those who have been made poor a guide to what is possible when oppressed people unite and completely turn over a system based on greed, white supremacy, and chattel slavery to a system that abolished private property in the form of both land, resources, both natural and, and in labor of millions of oppressed and enslaved Black workers. The Haitian Revolution has remained embedded in the culture of working class struggle throughout space and time. It is said that before the beheading of Suzanne, uh, known as the Tigress, uh, Belair, she cried, Viva Liberté, Aba Esclave. Long live liberty, long live freedom, down with slavery through her muzzle as the French captors were about to behead her. She shouted this and has built a legacy ever since that set a courageous precedent of the spirit of revolution that continues to strike fear in the oppressive forces today. We are in solidarity with our neighbors in Haiti, and we demand that the United States, the Organization of American States and the core group reverse course, denounce Mozi's attempt to stay in power and to keep their damn hands off of Haiti. Long live liberty and long live the Haitian revolution. Hey you guys, my name is Tamika J and I will be performing my original song called PSA. And in this song, you will hear my dad talking about his life in Haiti, life in being a Haitian man in America. So enjoy and let's get into it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Good evening, family. My name is Reverend Erica Williams and I am with the Popular Education Project here in North America. And today I come boldly standing in the authority of the brown skinned Palestinian Jew named Yeshua, Jesus Christ. But when he stepped on the scene, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captive free, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord now. And he closed the book and he said, the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And that brown skinned Palestinian Jew began to set it off in every space and every place all over, bringing this revolutionary call to change the land. And so I'm here today on this moral Monday in the start of Holy Week, in the week that we will celebrate, well, I don't celebrate, but I remember the reason why that brown skinned Palestinian Jew was crucified because he went against the Roman Empire for the very reasons that we are here today to stand up to the US, to the United Nations and to all of those who oppress our sisters and brothers around the land, in particular, our kin in Haiti and say, take your hands off of Haiti. Take your hands off of our people. And so I'm here today boldly to declare that it is time for the US to step up 
and to tell Moisey and others that you cannot continue to oppress the people because we, the people around the world, are here. We are standing in solidarity with our kin. We will not be silent and we will do as the revolutionary Christ did. We will stand. We will stand united and we will declare, ha, you can't stop the revolution. And so today, I want us to come together and I want us to stand together, even though we may be virtual. I want us in this spirit of our ancestors who have come before us and have paved the way for us to remember that they may have killed some, but they must remember that we are seeds and that we will continue to grow. And so we're just not here today just to have a concert. Yes, we're here to hear the beauty of the people who have come together to give us all of the virtual things that we will see today. But we must remember that the spirit of those who have come before us remains here and it is in us. And so we must remember that Haiti is all of our fight. We must remember that if none of us are free, excuse me, that none of us are free if all of us ain't free. So we must remember today our Haitian kin and remember that the work continues with us. And so I'll leave you with these words that were sent out by the revolutionaries of Haiti in 1804 that says, we declare we are dared to be free. Let us dare to be so by ourselves and for ourselves. And so I say boldly today, hands off of Haiti, hands off of Haiti, hands off of Haiti, because the world is watching and you will not stop the revolution. And so I present to you now our dear comrade, Vijay Prashad, who will give us another international solidarity word, Vijay. Hello, I'm Vijay Prashad, Director of Tricontinental Institute for Social Research. Haiti is in the midst of cascading political crises reflected in the protest to remove the government whose mandate has ended. Beneath this crisis of government is a long-term economic crisis deepened by the US hybrid war on Venezuela. Venezuela, through Petro Carib, provided Haiti in an act of solidarity with petroleum. Haiti's currency, the god, devalues. Prices rise, livelihoods decline. But the economic and political crisis go back to Haiti's origins and to the pressure it has experienced since 1804 from imperialism. Every time Haiti has attempted to stand up, it has been pushed down. After the Great Haitian Revolution in 1804, the country was forced to pay indemnity to France. 80% of Haiti's precious wealth was used to service this debt, leaving it in a state of total chaos. This is an odious payment. From 1804 to 1947, Haiti paid $21 billion for the liberation of their own country. Neither France nor Citibank, which made billions in fees, have ever apologized for this plunder. Every time Haiti has attempted to stand up, it has been pushed down. When the Haitian people tried to take control of their political life by an uprising against a brutal government in 1915 and therefore to annul the debt to France, Germany and the United States, the US Marines invaded and remained in the country till 1934. Actually, they never left. The US backed every brutal dictator that followed, particularly Papa Doc and Baby Doc, who ruled the country from 1957 to the late 1980s. Every time Haiti has attempted to stand up, it has been pushed down. The flood or the lavalas was a movement of ordinary Haitians who fought to push their agenda to the center of political life. Their leader was Jean-Bertrand Aristide, who came to power through an election in 1991. He was over overthrown not in one coup, but in two coups in 1991 and 2004, both backed by the United States. 
Lavalas has been kept at the margins of Haitian political life through intimidation and fraud. Every time Haiti has attempted to stand up, it has been pushed down. Hurricanes, earthquakes, an invasion by the United Nations, the pest of external debt, the weight of deflation. All of this goes back to the refusal of the imperialists to allow Haiti to breathe the fact that it was the first country in the world to create a revolution against imperialism between 1791 and 1804. We stand in solidarity with Haiti because today, 29 March, is the day in 1987 when the country adopted a new constitution. We stand with Haiti for that day and for the example of the Haitian people for their revolution of 1791 to 1804, to their struggles to this day. Wow. Thank you so much, Vijay. Uh, we really appreciate that message. We are going to go now to a video by Julie Jaraski who is performing La Nuit du Sangler or La Noche de Jabali by Ali Primer. And Leonardo, our comrade, will talk so much more about the significance and the history uh, and the influence that Ali Primera has uh, later. But I want to read you uh, the translation for this beautiful song uh, that comes to us from the revolutionary solidarity between Venezuela and Haiti. Julie, will say from Venezuela in solidarity with Haiti. Turn off the radio, comrade. There are so many things to discuss. Don't ask me how many times in a second the hummingbird moves its wings. Ask, for example, what are we doing for Haiti? Where is it, you say, in a place surrounded by night in the immense cobalt of the Caribbean, this night in case is memory, is hunger, is the impoverished word, is denying the path to intelligence, is denying the worker, is a poet. The Haitian patriots march with lights and colors in their hands. They march blossoming like the soil watered by showers and songs they've struggled alone despite marching and blossom as men march when they struggle they've struggled alone comrade they struggled alone comrade until our conscious shoots in the struggle to liberate haiti until the world rises up in a single luminous voice of solidarity and together we create the morning that forever ends, the night of the boar. Now let us set up the march that the word with steps is a dead word, that the word without steps is a dead word. And times tell us, go forth, let us build together in the morning, the forever ends, the night of the boar. Let's not the future ask us, what did you do for Haiti, for Haiti? And have to reply by lowering heads that men fell are the exact number or the times in a century that the hummingbird moves its wings carried out by the commune members of Altos de la Lice the neighbors in Katia, and the music workshop of Professor Narciso Pichardo in La Pastora. This is an adaption of the song, The Night of the Boar by Ali Primera. Music composition and vocals, Julie Jaroweski and Soledad Calza. Please enjoy.
Colibri Bas des airs Demande par exemple Que faisons-nous Pour Haïti Où est-ce dit Entouré par la nuit dans l'immense cobaye, dans l'immense cobaye des Caraïbes, la nuit là-bas, c'est la misère. C'est la fin C'est le mot emprisonné C'est la route parée à l'intelligence C'est nier que l'ouvrier Les patriotes haïtiens marchent avec des lumières et des couleurs dans leurs mains et ils marchent fleuris comme la terre arrosée par des bruines et des chants mais ils ont combattu Et bien qu'il marche fleuri Comme les hommes le font Quand ils se battent Ils sont combattus seuls Compagne Ils sont combattus seuls Feu dans la lutte pour libérer Haïti avant que le monde ne se lève d'une seule voix lumineuse, solidaire et qu'entre nous tous nous passions le matin finisse à jamais avec la nuit du sanglier maintenant mettons-nous en marche les mots sans les pas des mots morts et le temps nous dit avance âme profonde dans les flammes avance construisons ensemble le matin Finisse à jamais, pour qu'en finisse à jamais la nuit du sanglier. 
ne laissons pas l'avenir nous demander qu'avez-vous fait qu'avez-vous fait pour Haïti pour Haïti et que nous répondions honteux que ceux qui sont tombés étaient le nombre exact du nombre de fois qu'en un siècle le colibri battait des ailes. Wow, what an incredibly beautiful song. I had the opportunity to travel to Venezuela about a year ago and to learn about the Bolivarian revolution and the connection between Venezuela and Haiti and also for those of us who come from the United States and understanding the connection that we all have as those who have been captured from our ancestral homeland of the continent of Africa. And though we have been brought to many different shores, how connected that we still are to one another, even as myself growing up in the South, having ancestors who come from uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, and knowing the impact that Haitian revolutionaries have had on the liberation of my ancestors, the training and the political development and the inspiration that has come from the revolutionaries in Haiti. And without further ado, I would like to introduce Lola Posan. Lola, please tell me if I've, I've you know, not said your last name correct, please help me. Um, but I am a big fan of your work. Uh, it's been a pleasure to be interacting with you via email. Uh, you live in Brooklyn, I live in Harlem. We got to link up. But uh, Lola, can you please talk a little bit about your submission for the International Day of Solidarity with Haiti? Okay. Thank you, Chara. Thank you to Code Pink for the opportunity for me to present my work and to talk about Haiti my dear country. I couldn't have let, uh, let it go by without memorializing the event that could have been a head start for uh, Haiti to be better. Uh, the painting is a 30 by 40, um, oil on canvas. It's a C-17 cargo plane returning to the US with uh, first responders and civilians after the 2010 uh, earthquake. The picture attracted me in that the people seem to be asking themselves, why are, why are they returning? They would have preferred to stay back and participate in the great work that, would, that uh, could have been done. Unfortunately, Haiti's administration and some top U.S. officials like the Clintons thought they knew better than the Haitian people. As a result, we end up now with Jovenel Moïse, who is driving Haiti to its worst possible state. The people are suffering on all fronts, as was demonstrated yesterday and today by the hundreds of thousands taking to the streets of all major cities in Haiti calling for Jovenel Moïse to go because his constitutional mandate ended last February 7. Let's press on President Biden to act on the attitude he had during the campaign. He seems to say in his own way that Haiti is what the one before him said that Haiti is. So don't bother. President Biden 
does not want us Haitian American voters to put him in the same category as that one, because we will be around in 2024. May he remember his stature of a candidate kneeling down last fall at Little Haiti in Miami. So enjoy the bidding. It's one of my best. It's uh, very dear to me because uh, I wasn't there during the earthquake, but I felt just like I was. I cried. I could not believe what was happening. And uh, like I said before, that was an opportunity for Haiti to uh, take on the right word, but uh, it cannot do it because the US and the other superpowers are supporting Jovenel just because he's not the good one for Haiti. Let's keep working on that and vive Haiti. Thank you. Thank you, Lola. Vive Thank Haiti. You. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Family, I want us to hear what our dear sister and comrade just offered to us. Thank you, Lola. You're welcome. We honor you and we thank you for coming to share with us on tonight. And I hope that you know that we stand with you and we stand with the people of Haiti. I want y'all to know this is participatory. So while some people just go ahead and throw in the chat, Viva Haiti. And Lola, we stand with you. Yes, come on, y'all. Yes, we are with you. Merci, Viva Haiti. Viva Haiti. Yes, yes, yes. We want the powers that do not be, because we know that all power is to the people, want them to know that we stand with our kin in Haiti on tonight. Thank you, Lola. Thank you. And here to support and continue in our day of international solidarity, we will have a special message from Sharice Bird and Steli with the Black Alliance for Peace. Let us continue in that same energy of Viva Haiti. Sharice. My name is Sharice burden -Stelly. I am a member of the Coordinating Committee of the Black Alliance for Peace. I am also an Assistant Professor of Africana Studies and Political Science at Carleton College. I express my unequivocal, unyielding, emphatic support for the movement that is happening in Haiti right now against the Jovenel Moise regime. I support the efforts to get the United States, the United Nations, and the Organization of American States out of Haiti to restore Haiti's self-determination and, and Haitian sovereignty. And I'm in uh, absolute solidarity with the workers, the organizations, um, the, the exploited and oppressed people of Haiti who are struggling for a better way of life, who are struggling for actual democracy, who are struggling for a government by the people and for the people. And so we were expected, uh, I'm sorry, we were expected to have uh, a couple students being presented by our comrade, Dr. Mamira Prosper. They will be on later. They've been out in the streets uh, organizing today around the International Day of Solidarity. And so we're going to go ahead and move forward to the, um, the uh, Caribbean Solidarity uh, song with Rosa Lina Lima and Yvette Chiclana uh, from the Teatro Yerbarcura. I am so sorry, y'all. I love everyone and I'm so sorry my pronunciations are terrible. Um, but we will have our comrades from the Caribbean Solidarity Collective uh, join us in presenting their solidarity with Haiti. And so I want to, before we get into uh, the video, I want to be able to express to you, they're actually translating this song into three different parts. And so the chant that you will hear over and over, at least in English, because I don't want to do harm to Spanish or French right now. Uh, so in English, my sister, my brother, Haiti. 
Today is for you, for us, for all the children of our Caribbean, our revolutionary ancestors, true freedom, Caribbean solidarity. And so from Puerto Rico, we present Caribbean solidarity. Mon frère a dit aujourd'hui c'est pour vous, pour nous, pour tous les enfants de nos Caraïbes. Nos ancêtres révolutionnaires, la vraie liberté. Ma soeur, mon frère a été aujourd'hui, c'est pour vous, pour nous, pour tous les enfants de nos Caraïbes. Nos ancêtres révolutionnaires, la vraie liberté. Ma soeur, mon frère, a été aujourd'hui, c'est pour vous, pour nous, pour tous les enfants de nos Caraïbes. Nos ancêtres révolutionnaires, solidarité. Caribéen, Caribéen, Caribéen. We just take a moment and just take that in. I'm sitting here and as I'm just thinking of what today is, with so much as Sierra mentioned earlier happening here in the US from the George Floyd, it's not the George Floyd case. It's the officer who murdered George Floyd in the US who continues to murder our people all across the globe even though they try so much to oppress us and keep us down, we are still such beautiful, rich and talented and creative and beautiful people. So I want this not for us just to be a time of us just to see and talk about all that is happening, but for us to remember that we are beautiful. Somebody just put in the chat, Yves Simon, we are beautiful, that is beautiful. Our kin in Haiti, Lola, you are beautiful, very beautiful. And our people are beautiful. So we must keep that in the forefront as we see all this beautiful, rich creativity on tonight. My soul is just inspired by our comrades across the globe who are bringing so much beauty to us even in these dark times. So thank you to our comrades for that wonderful, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful video. Now we'll have some beautiful visual artwork from Johanna Harmon, who will give us a highlight on the Ma Jean Michael Haiti Info Project, which explains Petro Chow. So please let us take this in and just embrace all of this rich beauty that we are partaking on tonight. Ashe, Johanna. Dear friends and supporters of our struggle, I'm telling you today, Haiti is in resistance to what many consider a new dictatorship. Part of this resistance is expressed through song, such as this video that appeared on Haiti's social media. They sing about the theft of the petro caribe money by the PHTK government, set to tune of the Italian resistance song, Ciao Bella. Enjoy.
I just wanted to include in here the last couple of images that you saw were images of Haitian student activists that were targeted and killed by the repressive forces of the police in Haiti. And so these student activists, uh, like many you may see, may see on social media, we have to be very careful about making sure that we don't share the names of the activists because of the repression that is happening in Haiti due to the pressure of the United States, the organization of American states and corporations like Coca-Cola uh, that we want to highlight uh, the uh, activist that Joanna was inspired by. And so now we're going to play the song of a few uh, Haitian activists, student activists that was shared to us by the Haiti Info Project that our comrade Maud is a part of. Oh, no, 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 Go! Bob qui allait, Petro Caribé, oh Petro Chao, Petro Chao, Petro Chao, 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 go comme nous manger, Kounia y a cherché, qu'on quitte là pour développement. Go pas quatre mimi, manger la famille, oh Petro Chao, Petro Chao, Petro Chao, 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 go pas quatre mimi, qui da pi en pi, après c'est pep qui parle payé. Tout le monde a demandé, tout le monde a cherché. Oh, pète-toi, ciao, pète-toi, ciao, pète-toi, ciao, ciao, ciao. Tout le monde a cherché, côté altéré, côté la jambe, trop caribé. Bon, comme qui partit, nous pas jamais jouer les chalets. Oh, pète-toi, ciao. Message à la nation. Oui. Comme Petro Caribé a pas de gonfler nous. Nous n'avons pas de bail à bossi. Et puis le peuple a nous mouté nous. Bow, bow. Incredible. Good evening, good evening, everybody. My name is Lizzie. Um, I'm a member of Femme Power, a queer abolitionist, internationalist, feminist um, artist collective based in Miami, Florida, also on indigenous land on Seminole and Tequesta land. Um, I'd like to say a word about the importance of international working class solidarity and why it's so important that we search for, in particular, working class solidarity, international working class solidarity. We know, like Reverend Erica said, we are not free until everybody is free. The world is ruled by the US and global fascist powers like the UN, like the OAS, that aim to own the earth for their profit and control. Black, brown, and poor people in the global south, like Haiti, suffer the most from it. Our internal struggles here, being based in the belly of the beast and empire inside the United States, are directly connected to the struggles elsewhere. The ruling class has their own internationalism. They have their globalization. They have their multinational corporations. What we need is a working class internationalism that unites our struggles and is able to identify our true enemy, which is capitalism and imperialism and empire. The Haitian people are our revolutionary siblings and they are a source of inspiration for working class people all over the world. And it's an honor tonight to be gathered around comrades who are sharing their gifts and their talents and their passions and their words and their music and their song and their art to celebrate just that and to celebrate the resilience and the power of the Haitian people. I would like to um, introduce these next two messages of solidarity um, from Tim Schenk, who is with the Committee on U.S. Latin American Relations, as well as the University of the Poor, and Yasmin Zahra, who is with the U.S. Labor Against Racism and the War. 
Thank you. I'm Tim Shank. I'm with the University of the Poor and the Committee on U.S.-Latin American Relations, based in Ithaca, New York, United States. We are here today to denounce all attempts against the sovereignty of the Haitian people, whether it be from the U.S. Embassy, USAID, the OAS, or the United Nations. We stand with the Haitian people who have continually fought for their freedom and self-determination over centuries, and who have since Petion's solidarity with Simon Bolivar's fight against colonialism have been leaders in working class internationalism. Today, we stand with you. Tout moun ansam, vive pepaisien, kite it Haiti mache. I'm Tim Shank. I'm with the University of Solidarity greetings to our sisters and brothers, our comrades in Haiti from all of us at Labor Against Racism and War, an organization of labor unions and worker centers. We know that regardless of where you are in the world, the international working class have far more in common with each other than with any multinational corporation that steals billions of dollars from Haiti's natural resources every single year. We stand with you in your struggle because we see it as our own. We believe in your right to self-determination. The Biden administration is using our tax dollars that come from our labor to support and prop the illegitimate U.S. puppet regime of Moise when so many Americans are struggling right here at home. This is not in the interest of the people of the United States. Long live the revolutionary spirit of Haiti. You are showing us the power of the masses when they take their faith into their own hands. You are an example of hope for the entire world. Hello everyone, my name is Helen Peña. I'm also here representing FemPower. Um, like my comrade Lizzie mentioned, we are a collective of anti-imperialist feminist culture workers from Miami. Um, in the last event Code Pink held in solidarity with Haiti a few weeks ago, our comrade Leanne from the People's Forum mentioned an incredible, incredibly inspiring quote, which was, the Haitian Revolution is the revolution that made all other revolutions possible. It has been an honor to take this moment in time as an opportunity to study the Haitian Revolution, reading the Black Jacobins, listening closely to the videos shared online, the voices on the ground, listening to the songs, listening to the chants, listening to the artwork shared, this video that you will see now that I made in collaboration with my comrade Yesenia, a Cuban comrade, was made to amplify the voices of the Haitian people organizing on the island. Knowing that the Haitian people carry on this fire, this spirit of insurgency and resistance, this legacy of the Haitian revolution, it is alive in them. And precisely because it is alive in them, it sparks a fire in the hearts of oppressed people everywhere, showing us what is possible when we unite against our oppressors. You'll see in the video references to the many instances of US intervention from 1915 until today, from the Monroe Doctrine to the backing of Duvalier to the mass deportations occurring right now to the backing of Jovenel Moise. But more importantly, you'll also see the fire alive inside of the Haitian people fighting against the chains of colonialism and imperialism. As a Dominican American living in Little Haiti, Miami, known as occupied Seminole Tequesta land, also known as the, northern moist, the northernmost point of the Caribbean, also home to the largest population outside of Haiti, I stand proudly with my Haitian comrades and all our comrades around the world resisting colonialism and imperialism and fighting for our right to life, 
to bread, to shelter, to poetry, and to magic. 1804 lives forever. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Emily and I'm with Code Pink. Um, next, I want to introduce some beautiful visual art. Um, we have New Pop Domi by Valentina Aguirre. New Pop Domi, and I'm sorry if I'm butchering that as well, um, by uh, artist Oscar Corapse Utopics. And thirdly, we have Cot Cobb and Cot Cobb 2 by Daniel Duque. Hola, mi nombre es Daniel Duque, soy ilustrador y diseñador gráfico, formo parte de la comunidad de Utopics y desde Venezuela les envío un abrazo cálido y revolucionario a todas las hermanas y hermanos de la Puebla haitiana. Cada vez que Haití alza la cabeza pareciera que el mundo tiembla, ustedes son siempre como un faro de luz que ilumina el Caribe. Han marcado de muchas maneras de caminos de revolución y transformación social. Les recuerdo que lo están haciendo bien, que son un pueblo valiente, que lucha por sus derechos, por una realidad mejor. Y si los tienen en este momento pisados es porque están pagando el precio de ser valientes y aguerridos. Todo el equipo de Utopix les estamos profundamente agradecidos, les admiramos y aquí les enviamos nuestra afectuosa solidaridad en su lucha.
I cannot tell you how much I love and appreciate this collective, a uh, Utopics. Uh, they just have such a wonderful spirit and energy and are so down with the revolution that I am just so grateful to have them as a part of this online concert and exposition that we are in collaboration with. And so next we will have an old friend, uh, someone who has been a part of the Code Pink family and network uh, since probably the beginning, uh, Lily Hayden. Uh, we will have uh, more love presented by Lily Hayden. We can all use a little bit more love uh, in times like these. Our dear comrade Che Guevara said, at the risk of seeming ridiculous, let me say that the true revolutionary is guided by a great feeling of love. It is impossible to think of a genuine revolutionary lacking this quality. Let us just take a moment, center yourself for a moment. And think about our kin right now in Haiti. If you can, just pause for a moment.
And let us think to ourselves how we can fully commit more deeply to loving our kin in Haiti and our kin all over the globe that are being marginalized and oppressed by this imperialist system, particularly the US. And let us commit to having that revolutionary love that cannot be denied. Can we do that tonight? Y'all know I'm an old preacher, so I wanna call and respond. If you can put it in the chat tonight that we are going to be more deeper in our love for our comrades around the globe. More love, that is what is being called of each of us as we take down this empire. Let me see you in the chat tonight. And as you let us know that we will do more love, we will hear from more comrades around the globe who have committed their lives to this call for deeper love, more love. Because we recognize that we the people have the power and that if we're gonna use our power, it must start with the force of love and showing up for one another. And so tonight we have comrades who will show up and one in particular is Selma James, a leading socialist feminist and partner of the late C.R.L. James, who wrote, excuse me, whose black Jacobins brought the Haitian revolution to life. I'm gonna to read tonight. I am so deeply honored and privileged to read this powerful message of solidarity with our kin in Haiti from our dear comrade, Selma James. Today marks the anniversary of the signing of the constitution written by the people after they had overthrown the Devailers dictatorships. It remains an occasion for celebration it also frames the cause for which Haitians are risking their lives. The attempt by Jovial Moise, placed in power by the US to replace the constitution in order to reimpose a new dictatorship. Many people have been murdered, raped, their homes destroyed by official and unofficial death squads. Today, Today's Black Jacobins, man, women, and child, and people are the inheritors of this great revolution that defeated Napoleon and other imperial powers to abolish their slavery and create the first independent Black Republic in 1804. I got to say that again. Today, Black Jacobins, man, women, and child, and people are the inheritors of the great revolution that defeated Napoleon and other imperial powers to abolish their slavery and to create the first independent Black Republic in 1804. Venezuelans will understand our debt to Haiti. Free independent Haiti gave Bolivar first asylum, then men in arms to continue his liberation campaign. Today, Venezuelans also confront the US and its allies in defending the victories of their Bolivian revolution led by Hugo Chavez, known as the president of the poor. Just like Haiti's Jean Bertrand, Aristide, the beloved his dad ousted by the US coup in 2004. At this moment, this is fighting against dictatorship in Burma, Thailand, Honduras, and many other countries, and millions are on strike against Mandé, India's would-be dictator who wants to impose a corporate land grab that will starve millions and further pollute the land, the water, and the air. We, we must build international connections and networks to support each other's struggles, whether we come from a small island or a huge country. I gotta read that again. We, we must build international connections and networks to support each other's struggles, whether we come from a small island or a huge country. Haitian lives matter. 
Haitian lives matter. Haitian lives matter. Venezuelan lives matter. Indian lives matter. Burma lives matter. Palestinian lives matter. Grassroots lives matter. Everywhere we are struggling to survive a number of pandemics. Not only just COVID-19, but poverty, militarism, ecological devastation, overwork, every form of racism and sexism, every form of political repression. Our will and our desires and needs thwarted at every turn. We know that about ourselves and about each other too. Power to anti-capitalist, anti-racist, anti-sexist movement. I got to say it again. Power to the anti-capitalist, anti-racist, and anti-sexist movement. Bless you, Selma James. Thank you for this powerful, powerful message in solidarity with our Haitian kin. Just take a minute, y'all. Take a minute. And we will hear more messages of solidarity from comrade Carlos Ron, from the Instituto Simon Bolivia, from our dear comrade Crystal B, from the General Baker Institute. Hands off of Haiti, hands off of Haiti. Hi, my name is Carlos Ron, I'm president of the Simon Bolivar Institute for Peace and Solidarity Among People. I come to you from Venezuela in order to express our support to the people of Haiti, in particular at this time where the people of Haiti are struggling to defend their democracy, to maintain peace, to defend their sovereignty, and to guarantee a dignified life to all of the Haitian people. The history between Venezuela and Haiti has always been propelled by the principle of solidarity. We would not be the free independent nation we are today had it not been for the selfless contribution of the Haitian revolutionaries, who only ask in return that the enslaved Venezuelans will be freed once independence was achieved. President Hugo Chavez reminded us of this contribution of the Haitian revolutionaries and committed Venezuela to programs of solidarity and cooperation that would guarantee development for the future of Haiti. Today, as Haiti faces the vicious attacks and injustices of the capitalist system, as Haiti faces the attempts of former colonial powers to impose their will on the Haitian people, to undermine Haitian democracy. We demand that the rights and the will of the Haitian people are respected. And we hope that the popular movement in Haiti can find elements of unity so that they can achieve the building of a new society with more rights and with more guarantees for social justice that the Haitian people truly deserve. Hi, I'm Crystal B here representing the Juno Baker Institute and co-host of the Women of Color Organizing podcast. And I am here to say that we stand in solidarity with our Haitian comrades because it is our responsibility to co-liberate ourselves from and against the U.S. sponsored corruption, uh, supported by the Biden administration, supported by the United Nations, supported by the Organization of American States, and against the dictatorship happening in Haiti. And furthermore, as a U.S. citizen in the belly of the beast, we are powerfully against U.S. imperialism. We know that we have a shared enemy and that our struggles here in Detroit are related and connected to the struggles against U.S. imperialism in Haiti. This is a humanitarian crisis and we will not stop until we are liberated from the capitalist regimes that oppress us all. So please know that your international family is fighting with you in our shared struggle for liberation. Peace. I'd like to share a quote from the late Tony K. Bambara, whose birthday we just celebrated this past March 25th. The task of the artist is determined always by the status and process and agenda of the community it already serves. 
As a cultural worker who belongs to an oppressed people, my job is to make oppressed to an oppressed people, my job is to make revolution irresistible. Tony K. Mavara was a radical black feminist thinker, educator, filmmaker, cultural worker, organizer, and visionary who devoted her life to the liberation of black people everywhere. It's a pleasure to introduce the next visual artist, um, Annabelle Heckler, who is based in Brooklyn and part of the May Day Comics Collective as an illustrator. Um, thank you so much, everybody. It's been amazing to um, be in this space and uh, see all of your amazing work. Um, I, yeah, I think uh, my comic echoes everything that folks have already said tonight, but just wanted to say um, thank you and Messi uh, Pil, gracias, to uh, some of my sisters from 1199 SEIU, the Healthcare Workers Union. Um, who taught me all of the things that are in the previous comic. So to Altid, Marie, Monique, Rose Micheline, um, and many more, Rachel, Roxy, Kim. Um, thank you, Messi Ampil. Um, gracias. Thank you so much, Annabelle. It has been wonderful to get to know you via email. I look forward to us actually connecting in real life, although I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure just based off of our organizing history in Miami and New York, I feel like we've met before. Um, but I feel like that with a lot of like the folks that have contributed to this space, Honestly, it has been amazing in this call for international solidarity with Haiti, the folks that have reached out in support of our Haitian family and uh, uprising and uh, in, in, in struggle for sovereignty and uh, self-determination. And so next we are going to introduce Mashaila uh, Buckmaster of uh, Chaplains on the Harbor in Washington. I have to say, um, like I told you all, my background has been in opposing police brutality, mass incarceration. It has been rooted in uh, organizing around mostly black and people of color uh, in Miami. You know what that means. Uh, in Florida, you know what that means. And so I remember when I was looking at leaving uh, the Dream Defenders uh, as staff, uh, the Dream Defenders being this organization that we started after Trayvon Martin was killed, I was just like, okay, I cannot go to an organization that is just full of white people. Like I have to have an organization that is like black focused, black centric. And of course, the next place I go after leaving the Dream Defenders is, you know, the BFE in Washington State with chaplains on the harbor. And I remember going and just being like, okay, what the F am I doing here, first of all? And, you know, thinking my entire life that what it means to be incarcerated, what it means to be oppressed by the state was always synonymous with being black, with being a person of color. Um, but my experience in Washington state uh, with the, the poor white people who have been severely oppressed, um, you know, starting with the uh, the the free tr uh, the free trade and uh, the sort of deterioration of trade that was based in Washington around the lumber industry, around the paper industry, as it was globalized, as corporations sought uh, cheaper labor and more resources, this town that was really brought together through the lumber industry uh, was destroyed. And what remained after, uh, which I was able to experience firsthand, 
was this extreme uh, oppressive brutality by the state that I didn't even think was possible uh, when I was thinking among lines of black and white. But as I came to understand the, the, the role of the state as this oppressive arm, this oppressive force of the corporate leaders, of those who we call them the 1%, uh, the ruling class, um, this is the arm that keeps all of us, you know, working class people, people who have been historically oppressed in line. And so going out to Washington State and being with chaplains of the harbor allowed me to really understand the full scope of the, the US state and the, the bounds that they're willing to cross, the bounds of human dignity that they are willing to cross in order to uh, keep a profit. And I feel like when we think about the Haitian revolution, when we think about the project of Haiti, we think about it from this, uh, this aspect of going up against the US state and going up against the interests of corporations, against the interests of, of the 1% whose, um, whose uh, interests, their values are intersected with the exploitation of people like us people who are of the working class, people who, whether or not we have a job, are beholden to our livelihood being based on wage labor. I don't know if Reverend Erica, if you wanna talk a little, you've been out there in, in Washington State, sis, and I just wanna know if like you wanna add anything about these leaders out there. Yeah, I think you said it, comrade. Um, I think it's just so powerful, uh, the work that is happening. If you all could, and if someone could possibly put it in the chat, Chaplains on the Harbor um, in Aberdeen, Washington, as Sierra has said, is doing some amazing work. I mean, just really bring it to the forefront in this nation uh, that it doesn't, you know, we know that race is definitely an issue in this country. We know that, but we know overall it is about class. I always tell my, my young folks, I still think I'm young, but I tell the young folks, it's about that cream, cash rules, everything around America. That's what it's about, that cash. And so what we see is that it's not just affecting First Nation folk and uh, Black folk and Brown folks, but there are poor, poor white folks in this country. Um, and as my grandma say, so poor, they can't afford the O and the R, they poor. Um, and so at the end of the day, we have been able to see firsthand in Aberdeen, Washington, through the work of chaplains on the harbor, how so many people have been denied uh, their dignity and humanity in this country, not just because of their skin color, but because of the profit and the greed of this nation. So you're going to hear from one of the key leaders tonight, Mishaila Buckmaster, as Sierra said, who is a badass in Washington, and they are doing some radical work to say to America, do what you said you would do for every person in this country. Mashaila. We stand in solidarity with our neighbors in Haiti and we demand that the United States, the OAS and the core group reverse course, denounce the president's attempt to stay in power and to keep their hands off Haiti. Let the Haitian people decide. Buenas, mi nombre es Erika Valencia de la organización Mundo Pacífico en Colombia. Quiero agradecer al Instituto Internacional Simón Bolívar por la invitación para expresar mi solidaridad con mis hermanas de Haití. En estos momentos se encuentran luchando por la vida y en la lucha definitiva por la independencia de Haití. Fuerza, fuerza, venceremos. Hi, I'm Abdul Shahi Lukman of Coffee, Current Events and Politics and with Black Alliance for Peace. And for over a century, Haiti's sovereignty has been obstructed. U.S. occupation, military dictatorship backed by external actors, coup d'etats, the international guardianship of the U.N., all of this imposes a political and economic direction that is fundamentally against the interests of the Haitian people and favors external interests over national sovereignty. We stand in solidarity with our neighbors in Haiti, and we demand the United States, 
and the OAS and the core group reverse course denounced Moises' attempt to stay in power and to keep their hands off Haiti. Let the Haitian people decide. Hands off Haiti. Whew. Thank you so much. And like our comrade Erica Valencia from the from Colombia with Mundo Pacifico, she says, I'd like to thank Simon Bolivar Institute to be able to express my solidarity with my Haitian sisters who are currently fighting for their lives and for the definitive independence of Haiti. Strength, strength we shall overcome. And so we want to share this poem that was brought to us by a comrade in Colombia. His name is Andres Castillo. And this poem is called Haiti. And I will translate it. Colombians might forget the role Haiti, Haiti played in their liberation. There are some things the heart should always remember. Emmerich Bergode. You are the black wound on our clarity. Solidarity flower the waves, the ajupa that has toppled so often, the land that feeds insomnia. Your heart hidden in the tree of iron will recover its finesse that lies in the midst of your kisses. Regarding the Bukhan, someday we will sing. I promise to bring you the Makute, a new moon, my sharpened hands of river of joys crossing the thirst of your mornings. You are the black homeland the dawn of my eyes, the path of another time, the struggle through which we are born. Haiti, someday we will sing, saving your forest under the flame tree. We will sing, we the children are yours and your name will again in the light of victory be planted. Haiti. That was a lovely poem and particularly like the line, the struggle through which we are born because it really underscores the fact that it's not just Venezuela that has a historic debt with Haiti. It's also Colombia and Panama and Ecuador and Bolivia and Peru, all the countries that were lib liberated by Simon Bolivar and his revolutionary people's army. And of course, when we talk about this historic debt with Haiti, it's not a debt of money as it's a debt for their inspiration as the first black republic and really the first democracy or the only democracy at the time. It, it's a debt for the supplies and weapons and ships and soldiers that revolutionary Haiti provided for our own wars of independence from colonialism. Up next, we have a Spanish language of the version of the song we heard earlier uh, from by Ali Primera. Ali Primera was a revolutionary Venezuelan folk singer internationalism and solidarity were as natural to him as breathing. He composed songs dedicated to the struggles of the Salvadoran people, of Black people in the United States, and this song, La Noche del Javali, The Night of the Boar, was for the Haitian people under the rule of Jean-Claude Baby Duc Duvalier. The song asked us the question, what are we doing for Haiti? Ali Primera passed away in 1985, but he remains an emblem of the Bolivarian Revolution, and his children are accomplished musicians in their own right. Here's his son, Ali Alejandro Primera, performing La Noche del Javali. Queremos abrazar en canción al pueblo haitiano, ese pueblo que está luchando por su democracia, por su libertad, por su igualdad por el respeto a los derechos humanos, por una sociedad más justa. Haití todavía lo condena el mundo, sobre todo el imperialismo anglosajón, por haberse liberado de forma temprana en este continente americano. Desde Venezuela, este abrazo en canción 
Mi nombre es Ali Alejandro I, cantautor venezolano, y queremos hacer de nuestro padre cantor, de nuestro cantor mayor, Ali I, la noche del jabalí dedicada al glorioso pueblo de Haití. Apaga la radio, compañera. Hay tantas cosas para conversar. No preguntes, por ejemplo, ¿cuántas veces por segundo mueve las alas el colibrí? Pregunta, por ejemplo, ¿qué estamos haciendo por Haití? ¿Que dónde queda, dices? Es un lugar cercado por la noche en el inmenso cobalto del Caribe la noche en este caso es la miseria es el hambre, es la palabra presa es negar el camino a la inteligencia es negar que el obrero es un poeta es negar que el obrero es un poeta que cuántos habitantes tiene los que le quedan después de tanta masacre Que si lucha, además de sobrevivir, que si lucha. Claro que sí, pequeño amor, claro que sí. Los patriotas haitianos andan con luces y colores en las manos. Y andan florecidos como la tierra regada por lloviznas y por cantos. Como andan los hombres cuando andan luchando. Pero han luchado solos, compañera. Solo. Andan florecidos, pero han luchado solos, compañera. Hasta que nuestra conciencia dispare en la lucha por liberar a Haití. Hasta que el mundo se alce en una sola voz luminosa, solidaria y entre todos hagamos posible la mañana que acabe para siempre con la noche del jabalí. La noche del jabalí Ahora pongámonos en marcha Que la palabra sin los pasos Es una palabra muerta Y el tiempo nos dice Avanza Alma profunda en llama avanza Pongámonos en marcha que la palabra sin los pasos Es una palabra muerta dejemos que el futuro nos pregunte ¿Qué hicieron ustedes por Haití? Respondamos bajando la cabeza 
Los hombres que cayeron son el número exacto de las veces que en un siglo mueve las alas el colibrí. Mueve las alas el colibrí. Mueve las alas el colibrí. En la noche del jabalí. Entre todos hagamos posible la mañana que acabe para siempre. Con la noche del jabalí. That was an absolutely beautiful um, song by Ali Primera. That was gorgeous. Um, next, I'm going to introduce a few different messages of solidarity. Um, our first message is gonna be from uh, Reverend Dr. Liz Theo Harris, who is the co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign with Reverend Barber. And she's also the director of the Cairo Center for Religions, Rights, and Social Justice. Following, uh, Reverend Liz Theo Harris's message will have Nikki from Fem Power uh, Miami and Power U 305. And the third message we will have is from Edgardo Garcia, the founder and secretary general of Friends of the ATC in Nicaragua. I bring greetings of solidarity from the 140 million poor and low-income people of the United States. My name is Reverend Dr. Liz Theo Harris. I'm the director of the Kairos Center for Religions, Rights, and Social Justice at Union Theological Seminary in New York. And I'm also the co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival, a direct action movement, a protest movement, of hundreds of thousands of poor and low-income people across the United States and across the world rising up together to eradicate systemic racism and poverty, ecological devastation, militarism and the war economy, and this distorted moral narrative of religious nationalism. We celebrate the organizing and mobilizing in the streets of Haiti, demanding the end of the dictatorship of President Jovenel Moisi, whose term was supposed to end on February 7th. And we condemn the repression of these protests and of the poverty, corruption, and violence of the ruling class against the people of Haiti. In our movement in the United States, we sing a song that I want to share the words of with you today. It says, somebody's been hurting our people. Somebody's been hurting our sister, our brother, our child, our grandmother. Somebody's been repressing our leaders, starving our children, poisoning our water for far too long. And we won't be silent anymore. Power to the people of Haiti. Power to the movement of the poor and dispossessed. Let's move forward together and not one step back. Solidarity forever. For over a century, Haiti's democracy, independence, sovereignty, will and self-determination has been undermined every step of the way. The political conditions in Haiti today are no different. Haiti continues to face the repercussions and the punishment for a resisting empire for over a century. We demand that the US, the OAS and core group stand with the Haitian people and reverse course by no means should Moise be allowed to remain in power against the will and against the interests and the needs of the Haitian people and the Haitian community. We stand in solidarity with our Haitian sisters and brothers and people on the island and off the island that are impacted by these disastrous decisions. Keep your hands off Haiti. We stand with Haiti.
Edgardo García, secretario general de la Asociación de Trabajadores del Campo de Nicaragua, coordinador de la Secretaría Operativa de la CLOC, Coordinadora Latinoamericana de Organizaciones del Campo Latinoamericana y del Caribe, CLOC. En esta ocasión nos dirigimos a la opinión pública internacional en nombre de los campesinos y pueblos indígenas de Centroamérica para saludar y dar toda nuestra solidaridad a las luchas de los campesinos y pueblos nativos de Haití que han dado su batalla, que la continúan dando para lograr su redención por la vía de la independencia. Haití es el pueblo que arrancó primero en la independencia contra las colonias, en este caso la colonia francesa. Haití es la revolución que nos inspiró, que inspiró al maestro Bolívar, que inspiró al maestro Martí y al general Sandino de Nicaragua. Nosotros estamos con Haití. Haití es un pueblo luchador. Haití es un pueblo que alcanzó victorias. Haití es un pueblo que instaló una independencia, una constitución, un sistema político luego del esclavismo. Haití está en la esperanza de la revolución, está en la esperanza de los cambios. Por eso Haití se bate en la lucha y avanza. Nosotros estamos inspirados por Haití. Haití, la revolución, la liberación, la independencia, la soberanía, es su derecho y es su máxima aspiración. Desde Nicaragua, desde la Coordinadora Latinoamericana de Organizaciones del Campo, nuestro abrazo a su batalla, a su independencia. So I misspoke earlier, actually. The previous song was by Ali Alejandro Primera. He is Ali Primera's nephew, not his son. But up next, we do have his son, Sandino Primera, singing an original composition along his band, alongside his band Colibri and El Chiquero, Hummingbird in the Pigsty. The song, Como Sería, What Would It Be Like, asks us to imagine a world where we unite to bury capitalism. Todo el mundo está metido en este peo 
los que se oponen y los que sienten afecto a una revolución o a un capitalismo nuevo a salvarnos o a esperar que nos salve algún politiquero y mientras tanto seguimos haciendo el trabajo los médicos, los científicos, los mecánicos, los músicos y un gentío más pero andamos separados esperando a ver quién nos da más dinero por el conocimiento y cada quien que salve su pellejo pero yo imagino cómo sería si el astronauta cómo sería si el obrero cómo sería si las finanzas cómo sería si el carpintero andan al sistema capital al cementerio cómo sería si el ingeniero cómo sería si el estudiante cómo sería si los gobiernos los agricultores y pescadores le mandaron flores a la tumba de ese muerto muerto capitalismo enfermo modelo cultural choreto laray 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 oh, echale calma a espantar ese mosquero los muertos que lloren a su muerto nosotros dediquemosle tiempo a lo nuevo a lo que están haciendo a lo que están creciendo y conversa y conversarla sin disparar aunque sí hay que disparar debemos juntos apuntar juntos apuntar si eso en algo va a solucionar ya que si fuera por eso entre Israel y Palestina ya lo hubiera resuelto cuánto disparo, cuánta metralla bomba y más bala y más bala y no soluciona nada ¿Cómo sería si el astronauta? ¿Cómo sería si el obrero? ¿Cómo sería si las finanzas? ¿Cómo sería si el carpintero? Mandan al sistema capital al cementerio ¿Cómo sería si el ingeniero? ¿Cómo sería si el estudiante? ¿Cómo sería si los gobiernos, los agricultores y pescadores le mandaran flores a la tumba de ese muerto? Muerto, capitalismo enfermo, modelo cultural, choreto el pescador, como sería ser agricultor, que mataron flores a la tumba de ese muerto, muerto. Yes, yes, down with capitalism. Let's abolish capitalism. Did y'all feel that energy through the screen from Bolivia to Nicaragua to Venezuela to Palestine to South Africa and the US? We are saying fuck capitalism. Yes, the Reverend said it. I meant it and I'm here to represent it tonight. Abolish capitalism tonight and keep your hands off of Haiti. Yes. Yes. Let's give our comrades a round of applause. What a beautiful song. That energy had me ready to move over here. Somebody put in the chat how we miss live music. What a, what a gift. Thank you. Thank you tonight to our dear comrades. And even though we may not be able to fully understand the language, we understand the spirit. 
We are one. We are one people, as we say in the in the U.S., one band, one sound. We are the people united, and I believe with all my heart we will never be defeated. Like our comrades in 1804 set the trail for us that the revolution continues. So I hope tonight you are getting reared up. I'm over here at the apartment by myself, ready to go in the street and ready to go protest, ready to go say, fuck America, let's free Haiti. Let's free our kin in Haiti. I hope you feeling it tonight. I'm so glad that, to be in this space. This is this is beautiful. Blessings to Cole Pink and to Sierra, to everyone for creating this space tonight. I think we all needed it. We all needed this tonight. So blessings upon y'all. And let me get out the way. I, I didn't took too long. Our next group coming. I'm fired up, y'all, and ready to go. Our next group tonight is the Congo Haitian Roots from right here in the U.S., from New York, from the BK, from Brooklyn. Um, they're going to present to us tonight, organize, organize. And tonight, their the message is clear. What I just said, the struggle continues. The IMF and the USAID and the CIA are in our country, here in the U to the S to the A, to the divided states of America. But brothers and sisters in Ken, we must come together working collectively, regardless of our differences, and organize for the future of this country and the world. We call on workers and students and youth and all members of the popular sector to organize, organize, organize on all levels. Let's give it up for our comrades, Congo Haitian Roots on tonight. Keep your hands off Haiti. <laughs> Ma candale, moi les chals, ma péral, mais nous en battre à vilo, mon yo prend pays, moi. Tout va tout, c'est y a non pays, y a, à l'équilé, mon yo vle tout y est, moi. C'est passé, moi d'abé passé, oh, à l'équilé, messieurs, d'amour, mon yo attaque, moi. C'est passé, moi d'abé passé, mes amis, oh, mon yo vle tout y est, moi. Messieurs, dames, parole la balle, oui, c'est vrai. Passé, moi, t'as fait passer. Mes amis, oh, mon Dieu, vous les souillez, moi. C'est passé, moi, t'as fait passer. Allez, qui les messieurs, la bouillon, attaque. Oui, 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 c'est passé, moi, t'as fait passer. Mes amis, oh, mon Dieu, vous les souillez, moi. Si t'es sonné, moi, t'as voilé. Et si nous, ça, mes amis, j'en ai marre, t'es moi. C'est passé, moi, t'as fait passer, oh. Allez qui les messieurs d'Amounio attaque moi C'est passé, moi t'as fait passer Mes amis, oh, mon yo vle tout yé moi Messieurs d'un parole d'un bas de bruit c'est vrai C'est passé, moi t'as fait passer Mes amis, oh, mon yo vle tout yé moi C'est passé, moi t'as fait passer Allez qui les messieurs d'Amounio attaque moi Allez quoi, allez quoi, allez quoi Ça 
Kaila Yo suis porté la misère Je colle sans souverain Nous avons une malédiction Mais yo méchant, yo méchant Mais yo méchant Thank you so much to everyone who has been a part of this evening celebration of the spirit of resistance of the Haitian people and what it has meant for resistance and uh, solidarity among the, the revolutionary working class. And so thank you so much for that. I would love to introduce our executive, uh, or our co-founder rather, of Code Pink, Jody Evans. I met Jody originally maybe about five or six years ago. <clears throat> it was after Mike Brown had been killed and folks had risen up in Ferguson and beyond uh, in, 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 in with the injustice of the police brutality and the extreme militarism and war on the poor and on black lives. And I met, <laughs> I met Jody in the weirdest of places. Uh, we went to Brazil together and we were among the, uh, the landless workers of Brazil, the MST. And I just remember Jody being this quiet little like, woman in the back of the room knitting. And I was like, what is this like random white woman doing in the back of this like revolutionary meeting? And 
I was able, that, that was my first introduction to Jody. And then I met her and just learned so much about the revolutionary history that she has been a part of and that she has helped to cultivate and that has really been able to lift up the organizing work, the struggle of poor and dispossessed people in resistance to the US state against white supremacy, against colonialism, uh, against extreme militarism and environmental devastation. And I am so, so happy to introduce uh, my comrade, Jody Evans, uh, co-founder of Code Pink. Thank you so much, Sierra. And also I, you know, I just want to say how deeply moved and grateful I am for these beautiful words and brilliant offerings and touching messages and moving compositions that have been offered to celebrate um, Haiti tonight. Uh, brilliant. Thank you, Sierra and Michelle and Leo for your love and care and bringing us together to be inspired and nourish our love and our desire for the liberation of Haiti. And thank you, Erica, for joining to co-host with Sierra and to so beautifully preach the wisdom of liberation, love, and solidarity. Love you so much. <laughs> and thank all of you for joining us tonight. Um, you know, we're here because we, we want so desperately for Haiti to be free to reestablish a real, just, equitable, democratic system instead of the oppression and extraction and destruction that has been the imperialist U.S. has burdened with them with all these decades. Tonight, we call on the U.S. to take the knee off the neck of Haiti as it has been there far too long and they aren't going to take it anymore. It is the Haitian revolution that inspired all other revolutions. Let it inspire us to be the revolutionaries who are needed right now. Let this night be a beginning. We must leave tonight with plans to continue. We live inside the belly of the imperialist beast and it is ours to act. You know, with our good neighbor team at Code Pink, you can engage to expose the puppet the U.S. government, the Office of the American States, the OAS, it's been mentioned so much tonight. Their bloody hands are on Haiti, Bolivia, Venezuela, and so much more. We must expose them and call them out and call out those that enable them. But we must always call out the imperialism of the United States that plays out around the world daily with casualties within and without the United States. We must remember that the barbaric, inhumane militarism of this imperialism comes home to the streets of the United States and ravages people around the world in service of greed, the war economy, and capitalism. At Code Pink, we work to expose militarism in our various campaigns, and first with our divest from weapons campaign that exposes that militarism is embedded in the very fabric of our society, in our schools, in our cities, in our states, in our churches, in our pension funds. We have to work to defund the Pentagon and the police to move our tax dollars away from war and policing to the life-giving needs of the people. We're also watching imperialism unfold as the US is driving a cold war on China using lies and hate to create an enemy, this has already casualties within the US. The six Asian women who were in Georgia this month and over 3,000 other reported attacks on Asians. We must not be used by the propaganda that is targeting the left and progressives. Please stay informed. Stay as we have tonight in our heart and in our connection and as, there, as Erica said, let us commit to revolutionary love. Make a plan. What are you gonna do each day from this nourishment? Where can you bring your love into conversation to inspire others to speak out for Haiti, to know Haiti, to know um, what Haiti is, to 
all of us around the world that believe in revolution. We must speak against the imperialism that has its knee on the necks of too many around the world. When that question is asked, what did you do for Haiti? You will then have answers and offerings for others to engage with. Ask those in your life to join you in love and solidarity. Haiti, they don't have a legacy of the oppression of the United States. They have a legacy that must be the celebration of revolutionaries globally. We have to bring that to life. So feel free to share your plans in the chat, but also after your creativity has been so nourished with this night, let the ideas of how we be in service grow. How can we be in solidarity? Find those, share them. Please tell Sierra we'll continue to develop our support in this campaign and engage you because we must continue to expose imperialism because to, we have to be in solidarity with the oppressed everywhere as we are so culpable here inside the belly of the beast. It takes all of us. We are all connected. At Code Pink, we know that engagement is love and revolution. And we thank you for joining in. Viva revolution, viva liberation, viva Haiti. Thank you. Viva, viva Haiti. Thank you so much, Jody. Um, again, if you just need to know how much love that Code Pink has for Haiti, I hope, I sincerely hope that this message from Jody really, um, you know, sticks in folks' minds and that we need to not only support Haiti in this day of international solidarity, but in all days, recognizing that the oppression of the Haitian people is an oppression that impacts all of us, all of us who are exploited around the world. And Haiti really draws out the contradictions of what it means to have human dignity and to believe in life versus the belief in property, the belief in exploitation, the belief in profit over human life. And the Haitian Revolution represents that. And so in our closing, we definitely want to thank so much again, our team at Code Pink, Michelle and Leonardo and Terry, who is in Nicaragua right now, leading an incredible delegation that was able to share with us this statement of solidarity with Edgardo. We are so happy uh, to have you in the field. Please return home safely, which we know you will. But uh, so much thanks to the Latin America team at Code Pink. You all are just badass and I love you all. And also thank you to Emily and Farida of our communications team, without whom, you know, just it wouldn't be possible. And um, our comrades, Reverend Erica from the Poor People's Campaign, who is out there in Washington State with chaplains on the harbor, and uh, Lizzie and Helen with Femme Power Miami and the Dream Defenders, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, as I told you both, I was super, super anxious and nervous about tonight. And it really meant a lot to have all of you join us and really represent the full extent of the love that the working class has in the United States for Haiti. And really wanting to uplift when we talk about why it is so important for us in the United States to be in solidarity with Haiti. We have to understand the history of revolution and the history of what makes revolution possible. And with the Haiti revolution, we see within its history, the ability to develop leaders of those who are most impacted those of us, the majority of us, as Dr. King talked with the least of these, to be able to develop these leaders, develop folks who are most impacted by the system that is exploiting us into the leaders that we need to understand 
the society in which we live and the contradictions that the values and principles and vision of human dignity has with the greed and exploitation of the US imperialist state, the United Nations, the organization of American states has. To really pull from the bottom those who are most impacted to rise against those who may seem much stronger than us, who may seem as though they have more might and force and militarism. And don't get me wrong, they definitely do. I mean, the US state has the most uh, weapons of quote unquote mass destruction without the morality um, that will help us guide towards a, a, a society that puts people over profit. And so we wanted to share with you this last piece um, that we created in solidarity with the Haitian revolution. I don't know if Emily, you could bring it up and we can share a little bit about this, but we really wanted to lift up what we understand as the four key things that makes a leader a leader in revolutions, what makes revolutions possible, and those lessons that we found within the Haitian Revolution. Um, our comrade, who I call OG Willie, who comes out of the Watts Uprising, uh, the, the League of Revolutionary Black Workers in Detroit, the Communist League, um, these generations of movement ancestors that have gone it up against the state and have either kicked the ass or had their asses kicked, whether, you know, depending on what stage they're in, but really understanding what is needed of the leadership of revolutionaries and what we call the four C's of clarity, of competency, of commitment, of connection, the clarity to understand who we are as an oppressed people, united beyond historic lines of division, outside of the boundaries of racism and sexism, and being connected to who we are and our relationship with our society as the working class, to have the competency to understand who we are and who we are up against, the exploiters, the, the corporate class, the 1% as, as we recognize them, to understand these different social forces that are at play and what is needed, how we need to understand our conditions, how we need to understand race, alongside class, alongside understanding the economic system that allows for the exploitation, the oppression of not only Haiti, but poor people around the world to continue. For us to be committed, we know this, that this is a long fight. You know, we know that today in the International Day of Action and Solidarity with Haiti, we will not end imperialism that this is just the start of relationships that will allow us to move forward in true solidarity, solidarity as a verb and not as an adjective and the connection, the relationships that we are growing in spaces like these. When we're not able to be together in physical sense, but have been able to connect somehow, some way through this this, this exhibition of solidarity with Haiti across countries, across continents, across languages. This is reminiscent of the powerful contributions of the leadership of the poor and dispossessed, what it takes to build a revolutionary movement. And we want to leave you all today with the fact that the artwork, the, the messages of solidarity are not meant to be owned or sold. Please download all of this. Share it with your friends, post it up on your walls. Oh gosh, take it with you to the streets. Um, this is definitely trying to go with us into the streets. 
Um, we stand in solidarity with our neighbors in Haiti, and we demand that the United States, the organizations of American states, and the core group reverse course to denounce Moise's attempt to stay in power and to keep their damn hands off of Haiti. Long live liberation and long live the Haitian revolution. Thank you all for joining us tonight.